the reason for the season. It's all about the reason for the season. You know, this is the period of Lent. And uh, some of you fast chewing gum, right? You fast chewing gum, you fast sweet, you, you fast all sort of things. But today, I hope we can enter into some real home truths so that we understand why we fast during Lent. We, um, in my church, we've been um, looking at the topic of God's eternal plan for salvation since the beginning of Lent. And... Um, Today, I just want to look at one of those aspects, you know, something that leads us to understand that God knew you, God knew me long before our parents were pregnant with us. So before we go into that, let us pray because it's a Sunday and this is a church service, okay? So, Father, we come to you by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for every life that is on this earth this day. Because you have made provision for the salvation of every soul. So, Lord, I call forth every soul that needs to hear your call, that needs to hear your loving wake-up call, that needs to hear your, your tap on their shoulder saying, baby, come back home. So, Lord, I just thank you for their lives. I thank you for what you are going to do in their lives. You have already created us into everything that you need us to have. You give us all sorts of things to live on. Some are poorer, some are richer, but you are the provider. So, my father and my king, Today, we want to come to you to receive the wisdom, at least a nugget of the wisdom and, and the ability to survive in this world. Because a lot of things are confused, a lot of people are confused, but in you, we can never be confused. In you, we have boldness. In you, we have authority. In you, we have peace. That inner peace that nothing can take away, no storm, no, no uh, uh, situation, no circumstance can take that peace that we have when we know you. So, Lord, here we are. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We speak into the, into the, the streaming line. Let the line be, be perfect. Let the streaming be perfect. Let there be no technical issues. And Lord, let your people receive from you, not from me, a human being. I'm only a vessel on this platform. And Lord, I pray that you would speak into the hearts of your people who are listening and who are willing to hear what you are going to say to them. I bless your name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, talking about wisdom to be able to live the life on earth. Um, let us go to the book of Job, one of the oldest books in the Bible. Let's go to Job chapter 28. I just want to use that to lay the foundation, to lay the grounds of what we are talking about today. Job chapter 28 from verse 12 to 22. I'll just read it through and let us allow the word of God to sink into our spirit. Job chapter 28 from verse 12 to the end. And it says, But where can wisdom be found? Job is asking, Where? Can wisdom be found? Because people think that going to school will bring them wisdom. Going to school doesn't bring anybody wisdom. So let's hear what the word of God says about that. Where can wisdom be found? 
And where is the place of understanding? Man does not know its value, nor is it found in the land of the living. Wisdom is not found in this earth, in the things you see. That's what the word of God says. Verse 14, the deep says, it is not in me. And the sea say, it is not with me. So verse 15, it cannot be purchased for gold, nor can silver be weighed for its price. It cannot be valued in the gold of offer, in precious onyx or sapphire, neither can gold nor crystal, um, can, neither gold nor crystal can equal it, nor can it be exchanged for jewelry or fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral of quartz, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia cannot equal it, nor can it be valued in pure gold. Verse 20. From where then does wisdom come? And where is the place of understanding? It is hidden from the eyes of all living and concealed from the birds of the air. Destruction and death say, we have heard a report about it with our ears. Verse 23. God understands its ways and he knows its place. For he looks to the end, ends of the earth and sees under the whole heaven to establish a weight for the wind and apportion the waters by measure. When he made a law for the rain and a part for the thunderbolt, then he saw wisdom and declared it. He prepared it. Indeed, he searched it out. And to man, to you and me, verse 28, he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So now we know the source of wisdom. And we know the source of understanding. It is found in God. Not in your university degrees. Not in your old grandpa with, with white hair and white beard. Wisdom is found in God alone. So with this, you know, on hand, you know, now that we have been... Uh, um, given this this kind of backup this this ground let us go into what we want to talk about the eternal plan of salvation god's eternal plan of salvation he knew you he knew me before your father and your mother ever knew that they were pregnant with you so let us um on we are trying to understand the the reason for this season Understanding, you know, when Lent comes, a lot of people fast. I was joking before, some of you fast chewing gum. You know, but, you know, it's, if you don't know something, you cannot act properly upon it. So today's um, topic that we want to look at is the sacrificial obedience. Sacrificial obedience. Because God offered everything. He is still stretching out his hand every day. He gives us everything. And he keeps calling us because of his, his love, his heart that is so loving. The Bible says he does not want any, any, any to perish. If people perish, if people, you know, suffer eternal, we are talking about eternal damnation. It's because they have refused this wisdom and understanding. Because God will do everything 
I mean, he has already done, but because we don't understand, he keeps doing. He keeps, like a, like a father and a mother, you don't give up on your children just because they disobeyed you once. So if we, we, who human beings who are sinful can do that, how much more our heavenly father, the father of all fathers, a loving father, the, the whole nature of God is love. The whole, he cannot but love. So, so you hear when bad things happen, they say, oh, why did God allow? God did not allow any of it. It's sin. It's the sin that destroyed the perfect world that God created. God created, we hear of the, the Garden of Eden, you know, everything was perfect until Adam and Eve sinned. There was no, no uh, uh, destruction in the world until we sinned. So Adam and Eve sinned, and of course we are children, you know, generations of that. So we, we, we suffer it as well. But God is a redeemer. God is a redeemer. He wants to take us away from the curse that came because of the sin of Adam and Eve. So, in today's, um, you know, to, to help us understand this God's plan of salvation, let us go to Genesis. It's always good to start from the beginning. Let's start from the very beginning. A very good place to start. Okay, Genesis 22, not right from the beginning. We've treated this for, for four weeks. Today is the fifth week we are, we are talking on God's eternal plan of salvation. So today, let's look at Genesis chapter 22. And I will read from verse 1 to 18. If I tell you, if I read one verse, two verses, and I tell you, go and read, I know you won't read it. So let me just read it for you. Just listen. Okay, the word of God is spirit, and it, it gives life. Jesus says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And Victoria, I'm not speaking on my own right now. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will speak into your heart. Many people are hearing what I'm saying, but each and every individual has their point of, you know, that switching point, that, that point where they say, wow, that, that's what I needed to hear today. Today, today, this seventh day of April, because God's word is always for the now. Okay, so let's read gently through Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 18. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. New King James, there are different versions, but it's the same thing. Don't let anybody deceive you, it's the same thing. You just have to listen to what the Spirit is saying. Paul says, the later kills, but the Spirit brings life. Until the Spirit of God enters into what you are reading and hearing, it, it, it has no value. People read the Bible and it doesn't make sense because the Holy Spirit is not there. Okay. So, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come and speak into our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. I read Genesis 22 from verse 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Then he said, that God said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Verse 4. 
Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Verse 7. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Verse 10, And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the Lord or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place, the Lord will provide. In some of your uh, versions, it will say Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Yireh. So it's the same thing. That's why I said, don't let the translation uh, disturb you. The Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemy. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. So there is a lot, a lot, a lot in those 18 verses. But um, I know I'm not going to rush this broadcast. But I, I mean, I won't take forever. But I just want us to, to you know, settle our hearts and... Uh, Try and understand what God is saying to us. His plan for us is blessing. His plan for us is good. But depending on where you are with him, he will test your faithfulness. He will test your integrity. He will test your, your love for him, you know. God does not tempt. It is the devil that tempts people to do wrong. But God will 
test your integrity. He would, he would, you know, like we, we, we do to the people we love. You try and see what does he like? Does he really love me? Does he really care for me? Or is he just saying that because? Or does he love me with all his heart? Okay. I will, um, the, you know, the whole, the whole, you know, season, we are talking about Easter or Passover. Some people think they shouldn't be Easter, but those things are just fleshy things. God, God created times and seasons. God, you know, gave us these moments because like we know, even the people, when they hear of Lent, they start to fast. Some of them are not even Christians, not believers, but they fast. They fast because they hear. They don't fast because they know why they are fasting. And today I want to help us to understand why we fast. And I know that because it's a public broadcast, I will, I will try to spread out the knowledge. You know, some people need milk. They are babies in the Lord. They need milk to feed and grow. But some people are stronger and older in the Lord, so they need meat to eat, you know, hard stuff. But um, I will try and balance it out. So, the Passover is one of the, in short, I think it is the highest, is the most important feast for the people of Israel. God instituted it thousands of years ago, and the people of Israel are still observing it. And because, you know, the non-Jewish people, we, you know, anybody who is not a Jew is a Gentile. So we came into this Abrahamic covenant through Jesus Christ. And because of that, we we, we don't all follow the, the 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 calendar of of the of the far east like the Jewish people do. But you can see that it falls during the same time. So whatever you want to call it, this is the Passover time, the time that God brought the children of Israel out of 400 years of slavery from Egypt and gave them the land where they live today. You can go back thousands of years. See, God is the same in every generation. I don't care. You know, people say, oh, is God still, still relevant in the 21st century? Yes, more than ever. Because, you see, God, when we, when we do things and, you know, we give commandments, you say, oh, it's not set in stone. Don't, don't bother, you know. It's just a, a, a guideline. No, but God's word is set in stone. Remember the, the law? He inscribed the law by himself in stone. So God's word is set in stone. It's from everlasting to everlasting. It does not change. I don't care which you know, generation you live in. So let us get that. God doesn't change. He's the same. He is relevant yesterday. He is relevant today. And he's equally relevant tomorrow. Because he says, I am that I am. So, we know from you know, what we read in Job, that there are very many things that human beings are incapable of understanding unless they listened to God. That's why I read that Job chapter 28, so that we understand that wisdom does not come from reading books. It doesn't come from your university education. Wisdom and understanding come from God. God says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you hear what the angel said to Abraham. I know that you fear God. It is that reverential fear. You are not afraid of God, but you have that, oh, that awe-inspiring honor, that, that, that respect for God. 
the fear, reverential or inspiring fear of the Lord and honoring him and respecting him, that is wisdom. And turning away from evil, pushing away what is bad, hating what is bad. You know what is bad. And God says, hate it. When you hate what is bad, then you start to have understanding. Otherwise, that the, that, the darkness of, of the, the bad things cover you and you can never have any understanding about life. That's why you hear people are so confused. People are so traumatized. People have no peace. People have no joy. It's because they live in evil. Evil surrounds them. And God is saying, hate evil. Get rid of evil from your life. You know what is bad. Just hate it. Get away from it. Don't let people draw you into it. They say, oh, if it feels good, go ahead and do it. No. That way you are just living in slavery. You are just living in ignorance. You are just living in, in torment. When we walk in holiness of heart and righteousness of character, then and only then will we gain an understanding of the way of life that is in this world. That's when we start to make sense of all the things that we blame God about. God is not to blame in any of that. It's, it's our sin. It's a sinful nature that causes all these things to happen. So today, looking at the, the character or the characteristics of the person of Abraham and his lifestyle, we want to, to, to find out what we need to do for our lives to change as well, for God to make a covenant with us. Because Abraham wasn't always, you know, what we read today in, in Genesis 22. He had to learn to walk in obedience and in faith. And we too can learn it. He had to learn. He made mistakes like all of us make. And if Abraham could learn, we also can learn. So the focus of this discussion of today is sacrificial obedience. When you learn to understand the, the, the magnitude of the God that you are serving, that you are walking with, the person of this God that you are walking with, then you, then you, you start to ask yourself, you know, what am I really doing? So I'll break down the scriptures. I'll break down the scriptures so that we can we can uh, understand it. Because the word of God is very, very simple. God did not make his word difficult because he wants everybody at every level to understand. And like I say, some people are new to this. So for, for them, it's milk. They are like babies. They are being fed with milk, but for others, it's meat. And, and a lot of times, for many people, it feels too simple to be true, but truly it is that simple, and it needs to be simple. God is not complicated, and he doesn't want to complicate anything for anybody. So going back to Genesis 22, so it came to pass after all these things. So a lot of things had happened in Abraham's life. So God wanted to, to test him and see, does he really love me for who I am? Or does he love me because I've blessed him? Because before, before now, Abraham was blessed. He grew, he, he grew up from a blessed family. God took him out and blessed him even more. And then God was going, you know, after he had learned all his lesson, like some of us have learned and will learn, God said, okay, let, let, this is the final one I want to try. Because he waited for this child for 25 years and I gave it to him. Now let me see if he loves that child more than me. Don't, don't, don't be, don't be um, uh, alarmed. God will not ask you to do this. 
You know, God will only test you at your level. Like when you see a, somebody hungry on the street, all you have to do is give the pound. Or, and you know you have food to eat. You know if you go home, you can have your coffee. But that person sitting on the roadside, does he have that privilege? So those people are there. To, God is using them to test us as well. Will you put your pound in the pocket and let another person that you can clearly see and, uh, you know, I'm talking about what you can clearly see. Somebody that is clearly uh, starving or hungry. So those are the kind of things. God is not asking you for Isaac, like in this case. So don't be alarmed. And uh, bef before I start from the beginning, let me go to the end. Let's read um, from verse 15 to 18 again. Because that's the nugget I want you to take away. That's the bit I want you to take away, knowing that God wants your salvation. God wants the best for you. God had already prepared the best for you thousands of years ago, before now. So verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. You have to imagine Abraham did not even have to, to sacrifice Isaac. God was only testing to see. But God takes it as though he had done it. Because he saw his heart. Because you have done this thing. And have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you. So God is speaking to your heart today. Because you are willing to sacrifice. We are talking about sacrificial obedience. Because you have done this thing. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, that means you cannot even stay in one place and count your blessing. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants. So that blessing is not just for you, but it goes into there. Imagine the time Abraham lived and we, we are the descendants of Abraham through Christ Jesus. We are still enjoying the benefit of what Abraham did. We are still enjoying the benefit of the sacrificial obedience of Abraham. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendant shall possess the gates of the enemy. So that tells us, you remember what Jesus says, Peter, upon this rock, I told you God's word is always set in stone. You are the rock and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. You see, we possess the gates of our enemies. If people stand up against us when we do things for God, just leave them alone because they are not fighting you. They are fighting God. Let me see who will fight God and win. Because the word of God is set in stone for you and me. When you obey him. He says, I will multiply you. And your descendants shall possess the gates of the, the gate of their enemies. Verse 18. In your seed, all the nations of the earth. So don't tell me you are not from England, you are not from Germany, you are not from Spain. God's word is set in stone. All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because you have obeyed my voice. God has released his blessing upon you today. Once you hear and you believe and you accept. 
Because God's word is set in stone. He told Abraham, because of what you've done, this blessing flows. It's endless. All the nations of the earth means all. I don't care where you were born. I don't care where you live. All the nations of the earth have already been blessed because of what Abraham did. But you have to know it and tap into it. Otherwise, it's hard work. You are just struggling for nothing. You, you are not in the covenant. You are not in the right place, the right kind of blessing. So you are an outsider. So let me, like I said, let me break down the simple. I know it's simple news, but without the Spirit of God explaining it to you, you won't know it. So, Holy Spirit, I welcome you into the heart of every person that is watching that will watch this broadcast, that you will speak into their heart in Jesus' name. Because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, listen to Genesis 22, verse 2. Verse 2. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there on a, as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. For those of us who know the Bible, we know that that was the same mountain where Jesus Christ was offered as a sacrifice for you and me. The same mountain. So what we are seeing here is just a type of the things that Jesus Christ fulfilled. God did not allow Abraham to, to, to offer up Isaac because that wasn't the point. He was just trying to see. And he was just trying to go through the motion to lay down the principles for you and I today. On this mount is the same place. I mean, tell me what is the ratio of things that Jesus would be sacrificed on this same place? So that's one. That's one revelation for whoever wants to catch. To, I'm trying to make you understand God's plan for salvation. He did it before you knew it. He loved you before you knew it. He planned for your salvation before you knew it. The only thing you have to acknowledge it, accept it, walk away from evil so that you can have an understanding of it. And then the blessing is yours because it's promised and God's word is set in stone. God cannot change his word. He's not a human being. I can disappoint you. Your father can disappoint you. Your mother, your friend, your brothers. Any human being can disappoint you, but not God. If God changes, if, if, God, if, God, if God's word changes, that means he himself has ceased to be. And we know that God cannot cease to be. He was before time. He created time and season for you and me. So, so that's one, that's one thing. And in obedience, verse 3, Genesis 22, verse 3, in obedience, so Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. He split the wood. I, I don't know if I should enter that now or if I should come back later. The wood, let me just say it now. The wood is always a sign of faith. If you look at 1 Kings 17 verse 10, you see when Elijah 
went to the woman of Zarephath. She was gathering wood. Wood is fat. Jeremiah 7, 18 says, children gather wood. So what we are talking about is childlike fat. Childlike fat. So Abraham split the wood. And I'm coming to why he split the wood. Okay. Childlike faith. Child, just trusting God, knowing that even you cannot love yourself the way God loves you. So you have to learn. Learn. Abraham learned it. We have to learn it. it you know, if you don't have the wisdom and the understanding, you won't know how. That's why I started with Job chapter 28, so that we know where wisdom and understanding comes from. Okay. He split the wood, verse 3, for the burnt offering and, and arose and went to the place which God had told him. Verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. You have to imagine, Abraham had, you know, the instruction from God. And he woke up, did it. Even though we know how terrible that might be feel the heaviness in his heart he will say what this child that i i waited 25 years for him now he's grown up now you want him from me but because he learned obedience he arose and and, and did what god said but even then even after even that initial obedience imagine three days journey is enough time to have given him cold feet. He could have developed cold feet. After three days, he would say, mm -mm, I don't, I, God, I don't think I heard you well. Uh, God, I, I, um, God, can you speak to me again? Uh, you know, you, you will develop cold feet if it's you and me after the three days journey. But he kept going. Thanks be to God. Because of his obedience, we are all enjoying. Glory be to God. So, verse 5. So, after the third day, he saw the place God was taking him to, verse 5. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The Lord and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So, he left the servants at the foot of the mountain or the valley, as you will, however you want to call that. So he left them below. He left them on that low place. And he said, the lad and I will go up yonder to worship. We are going to worship and we will come back to you. Okay. Verse 6. So Abraham took the wood of the offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. Listen to this. I said, when he split the wood, there was a reason. So even though Abraham had walked for many years with God, had learned obedience, he too had to impart that and teach his son. So he had to lay his own faith. I said, wood is faith, childlike faith. So he had to put that faith on his son. He had to put it on him. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, verse, verse 6, and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. So we have the wood, which is faith, and we have the fire, which is the Holy Spirit, the only person that can help you trust in God. Faith. Faith and the Holy Spirit, faith and the anointing, the ability to trust, the understanding, the fear of the Lord. And of course, the knife that was going to sever him from the past into the new, 
because God can never call you in and let you go the same way or empty-handed. You see, in the devil's lie when God says give. And you say, oh, I'm giving my last. You can never give your last to God. When you give, you will multiply. That's why I said not verses 15 to 18. When you give with your whole heart, he will multiply. He will blow your mind with the fruit that he will bring back into your life. So, verse 7. Now because Isaac has gained faith in the Lord, he becomes discerning. His eyes are open now. So he looks around. He says, he says to his father Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. Then he said, look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? You see, now he, he's enlightened. He, he's, he says, we've, we've got wood and we've got fire. Where is the sacrificial lamb? So our faith in God and the anointing upon our life, the Holy Spirit in our life, is the only thing that will reveal Jesus to us. The sacrificial lamb. You cannot know Jesus out there. You have to have choose to have faith in God. Hate evil. Have honor and respect for God. And he will anoint you with the wisdom and understanding to see the sacrificial lamb. This is the crux here. Isaac now was enlightened. There's wood and there's fire. There's faith and there's the Holy Spirit. But where is the sacrificial lamb? And Abraham being deeper in faith, being you know, older in the Lord, being even more discerning than his son, Verse 8, Abraham said, my son, don't worry, God will provide. Trust in God, he will do it. God will provide for himself. It is God that is sending us on this journey. I was sleeping quietly in my house and God said, Go on a journey. If he sends me on a journey, he has to provide for it. Don't worry, my son. He will provide. That is the, 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 the ability to discern, to have understanding of the things of God, of the will of God. Abraham said, verse 8, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. That is why God had to come as man. He provided the one and for all sacrificial lamb for all nations in Christ Jesus. You and I cannot pay for our sins. God Paid for your sin and my sin. We just have to accept his word for it. Believe him for it and receive that everlasting blessing. That is ours. He has said it. He has said it. He's not taking it back. It's set in stone. God provided for himself. He had to be the one to provide the sacrificial lamb for your sin and my sin. You, don't, you cannot do it. I cannot do it. We are sinners anyway. What can we do? You sin, you die. You are damned forever. But somebody says, I will pay for the, for, for the punishment. I will stand in place of you 
I will replace you on, on that cross. I will step in and save you, snatch you out of the judgment of, of sin. I will put myself there because I'm omnipotent, I'm om omnipresent, I, I live forever, I cannot die. I just lay my life down in your place and take it back again. I, I, I exchange you. So you, you, you now become me once you accept me. And in me now you live forever because I live forever. Just to, to, to make sure of the judgment, that the judgment stands. God put himself in your place and said, look, I've taken away your sin. I've taken away your guilt. I've taken away your shame. I've taken away your sadness. I've taken away all those things that torment you. Now I give you myself. <laughs> Imagine you carrying almighty God in you. You, you cannot be crying for nonsense. You cannot be crying for nonsense. He, he who is in me is greater than all that is in this world. That's the assurance. That's the, that's the bonus. That's the, the peace that you receive when you start to know this God. Who is the provider? He will provide for himself. He is able to provide all that you need. So, that was verse 8. Verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. You see? When he... Okay. First, he builds an altar. And then he placed the wood that he split in order. And then he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. That, that verse is loaded. That verse is loaded. You have to build, to build the altar of acceptance in your heart. You have, your heart has to to burn, you have to, 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 to get to that point of knowing, you know what, I have erred all my life. I have been misled all my life. I have, I, I have walked in the wrong way all my life. Now I hear this and my heart is burning. Where, where have I been? What have I been doing really? Why didn't I know this truth all this while? That is building the altar in your heart. Acceptance, acknowledgement of the truth. And when he built the altar, he placed the wood. So you cannot have that conviction without faith. That's, that's why I said that verse is loaded. Verse 9. He, he built the altar... And he placed the wood on it. And then he bound Isaac, the supposed sacrificial lamb. So you have to put your sacrifice now on that altar. You build your altar by faith, with faith, in faith. And then you put your sacrifice on it. From now on, I will reject evil. From now on, I will seek to know the truth. From now on, I will, you know, seek wisdom, have reverential fear, have, have that, that respect and awe-inspiring uh, uh, knowledge of God that will lead me. That is your sacrifice. You bind it with your faith and you put it in the altar of your heart. That's exactly what Abraham did. He built the altar, placed the wood, 
in order. So it's a personal decision. Your father cannot make this decision for you. Your husband cannot make this decision for you. You have to decide on your own. Place it in order and bind your sacrifice. From now on, I will seek the Lord and put it on that altar. Put it on faith. Do it by faith. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. What does that mean? That means you walked away from the past. The knife cuts you from what you used to know to where you are going. You will separate yourself. Because you've made up your mind, you sever yourself from all that you used to know, from your past. And you say, from now on, I am walking a new walk. You sever yourself. You cannot live the old kind of life because now you recognize evil that means you hate it and you separate yourself from it. That's the knife. And as you make up your mind to do that, God will say, yes, that's my child. He'll snatch you like no man business from the hand of the devil. All the things that you used to suffer, it will be like a dream. Your life will change in a split moment. The joy that will flood your heart, you, you have never known. The peace that, you, that will flood your being, you have never known. Because at that moment of that decision, verse 11, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, put your name in it, whatever, Victoria, Victoria. And I said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the Lord or do anything to him. It was only a test. Now I know you love me. Now I know you, you will not withhold your heart from me. Now I know you fear the Lord. That means now you are full of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now I know you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And I said it earlier. It's not as if Abraham had already slain Isaac, but God knows your heart. The moment you take up that knife to say, away with my past, now into a new life, God said, yes, that's where I needed you to come to. That's where I needed you to arrive at. Now I'll do the rest. You give me your life and watch what I'm going to do with your life. And then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket of his home. You see, the provision didn't come before. <laughs> you have to make up your mind to trust God, to have faith in God before you start to see. God will not... Why, why, why is it written that the ram was behind him? Because you cannot see behind. God has it all laid up, but you are blinded to it. You have to open up your eye in the spirit. You have to allow God to lead you so you can see 360. The ram was there, but Abraham could not see it. And God said he will provide. So he will provide. And don't always look in front. God has blessing for you all around once you are his child. So, so verse, I'm reading 13b. So Abraham went and took the ram 
and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. God does not want you to do what you cannot do, but he will test your diligence. God provided, Abraham said in verse 8, my son, God will provide for himself. God provides it. Everything you have is given. When you were born into this world, you were naked. Everything you have has been provided for you. So tell me what you have. The wisdom that you have to go to school, is it, is it not God? Is it everybody that has the wisdom to go to school? Everything you have has been given to you. We need to acknowledge that and stop and stop doing me, myself, and I, me, myself, and I, me, myself. That, that's waste of time and energy. Be Libra. God has given you everything. Learn to give. He provided the ram for the burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham, that's why he called the place the Lord will provide. This is what we have to know in this generation that we think we, are, we must all run for our daily bread. No, God will provide. You trust in him first. He will direct you to the kind of work he should do. The kind of work that will give you peace. The kind of work that will, you know, people around you will be friendly. So that you don't go grumbling to work every day and come home and it's grumbling. God will provide once you choose to, to step on his side. And so, coming from where we started from, he has provided because of your sacrificial obedience, because of your trust, because of your faith in him. So he opens you to wisdom and understanding because it comes from him. Without that, you are just wasting your time. So he says, verse 15, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time. So to, for you to know that God loves you, God thinks of you, God, God has so much for you that you have no idea about. So a second time God comes and says, in case you did not remember, in case you forgot, by myself I have sworn. That means I'm not swearing by the moon, I'm not swearing by the sun, I'm not swearing me, the everlasting God, the one that can never change, the one that will always be, the one that has always been. You know, people, people say, who created God? If somebody created God, then he cannot be God. And I will not worship that kind of God that somebody created. So, God says by myself, because he's unchangeable. By myself, I have sworn because you have done this. He did not even physically do it. But he had put his heart on the altar. He has severed himself from the, from the entanglement of the world, from the world system. He said, God is me and you from now on. He said, because you have done this thing and you have not withheld your son. You have not withheld your one pound from the needy. You have not withheld your time that you should do use for my things to do your own thing. Instead of going to church, you are watching TV. Instead of going to church, you are, you are, you are playing you know, somewhere. Because you have chosen to love me, to obey me, to walk with me, by myself I have sworn blessing i will bless you i will slap you with blessing everywhere you turn is blessing i will bless you i will multiply you i will multiply your descendants they will be blessed and through you through you abraham all the nations of the earth shall be blessed just because you have obeyed my voice obedience that's why I call this 
you know, uh, uh, talk, sacrificial obedience. Because you have done this. Everyone that will come after you is going to benefit from your obedience. So it does not just stop with you. That's why I say all this, me, myself, and I think it's only people who have no heart, they do it. When, when you are blessed, you have to be a blessing. You have so much. You cannot even eat it on, on your own. So you, you, you'll be generous automatically. Your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. That means victory. Victory wherever you go. God will provide. God will protect. God will preserve. God, God will do everything for you. Just when you walk in obedience. Sacrificial obedience. Sacrificial because your friends, your old friends won't understand you anymore. They'll be dragging you to the club and you're saying, no, sorry, I can't come anymore. And they'll be mocking you. You say you can mock on. That's sacrificial obedience. You step away from what is evil. And you start to have an understanding of the goodness of God, of the purity of God, of the holiness of God. You start to understand who God is, who you are dealing with with God has given every one of us a measure of faith so don't say I don't have faith I don't have that kind of faith no you have every human being in this world whether whatever they they choose to think they are they, everyone God has given everyone faith it just depends on how you apply your faith and what you use your faith for people have faith in people People have faith in their careers. People have faith in their husbands or wives. But God is saying, have faith in me. Have faith in me. So we all have faith. You just have to learn obedience. Learn to walk with God. Learn to walk in God. Learn to allow God to lead you. Abraham was a prophet, but he messed up from time to time. We all mess up. But that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't make God reject you on the spot. It's only when you have really, really made up your mind. Okay, I don't want to know this God. Pharaoh said it. Who is this God that I should obey him? Look at what happened to him in the Red Sea. <laughs> he perished. May God not let any of us perish in Jesus' name. So, the... The, the, the word of God is good news. And what we are listening to is the good news of salvation. God's eternal plan of salvation. He has planned to save you before you even knew it. So let us not be like the three, uh, no, the two servants of uh, Abraham. When he told them, in verse 5 of Genesis 22. Guys, you stay here with the donkey. That means you maintain that donkey mentality. Your great-great-grandfather says you have to worship idols and you're still worshiping idols. Open your eyes. Stop doing tradition. Start looking for the truth. Let your heart you know what is evil. God is saying, in order for you to have an understanding, hate evil. Once you determine in your heart to accept Jesus, you, you have a storehouse of wisdom, of wealth, of peace, of joy that you never thought possible. Because God is a gift. Abraham said he will provide for himself. God provides. You need to lay your wood on the altar and put your lamb on it. Stop going back to what you know you shouldn't be doing. Stop laying your, your tithes and offering on the altar and looking, at, and looking at the pastor. Oh, what is he going to do with it? While God has provided, like you, we hear, 
the ram was behind Abraham. He couldn't see it if God hadn't revealed it. You have friends and business partners in America. You have friends and business partners in, 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 in Belgium, in Spain, in, in, in everywhere in the world calling you for, for business prospects. And you are looking at your pastor. Oh, I, I put my tight on the altar. What is he doing with it? While God is opening doors around the world for you. Don't be ignorant. The blessing of God is for all the nations of the earth, for everyone. And this is good news for you and for me. But we need to step into it. God planned for this before time began. Because we don't know, it doesn't mean that it's not there. It's there. Look. This is the same, what I'm reading to you now is what the Jewish people read day in, day out. It's been there. Imagine all the story of the Jewish people, the people of Israel from generation. God laid it down. If not God, where will Israel be a nation today? Look at all the nations that have disappeared from, from the map. You just, if you doubt if there's God, look, look at Israel. Go read their story. This, this is their story. That will tell you that God is God. And we don't have to be Israelites to know this. You can know it. So, like Abraham and Isaac, let us just accept it. Let us put our faith on it. Let us act for the unction of the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit for, for enlightenment. Because Jesus is waiting right now. He's saying, okay, you heard this. What are you going to do about it? He's waiting. He's holding out his hand. He has always held out his hand. Probably you didn't know. But today you know. And all you have to do is to accept him. Don't, 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 don't sit down and say, oh, I have to be perfect. You cannot be perfect on your own. Trust me. You cannot. It's only the blood of Jesus that will cleanse you and make you perfect. You know, when people say no one is perfect. Yeah, on your own, you, you are not perfect. But in Christ, I am perfect. I am perfect in Christ because I've put myself in the perfect lamb of God. The one whose blood cleanses me and speaks over me day in and day out. So reach out. All you have to do is to acknowledge your sin, repent from them. Repenting just means, like I said, hate evil, turn away from evil, separate yourself from evil, start to walk in righteousness, start to learn what holiness means and live by it. That's all. Once you make up your mind in your heart, God will snatch you from the devil's mouth and put you in high places that you never thought of. Look at those people, you know, living with the donkeys. You, otherwise, you, still, you will only have donkey sense. I'm sorry to say, but it's true. But God says, come up here, come high and worship me on the mountain and experience the goodness of my storehouses. Experience joy, experience power, experience boldness, experience peace. Wealth that you cannot even think of. Because now you are not running after wealth. You just go to your work and everything is peaceful because you are not the one doing the work. You are just walking in your divine, you know, order. Abraham laid the wood in order. So now you're just walking in your divine order by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. So reach out now and touch Jesus. He's all yours. He doesn't share you with me. His love for you is complete, 100%. He, that's why he's God. He loves every individual 100%. Call it 101%. He is capable. He is God. Reach out and touch him. Say, Lord, 
I'm sorry, I didn't know this about you. Open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see. Open my heart to know you. Touch me. Touch. I want to feel your touch. Do you, can you imagine what it means for, for Almighty God to touch you? It's, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Release yourself. Lord Jesus, come in. I build the altar of my heart for you. Come and live in my heart. I accept you. I want to know more of you. I want to start to have an understanding of what is going on in this world. And I need your wisdom. Because wisdom comes from God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, your excellent word, your word of peace, your word of love, your word of hope. In you, we have hope. And this hope can never be disappointed. And so, Lord Jesus, I thank you for that sacrificial death on the cross. And I thank you that because you were obedient unto death, you were rest up after three days. So the three days journey was a joyful journey. You did not rot in hell. You went, even during those three days, you went to release the captives. Lord, we thank you for your perfection. We thank you for your love. And I just say, come into our hearts one more time. We welcome you. We receive you. Like you spoke to Abraham the second time. For those of us who have received you before we say speak to us again because we are children we we tend to forget these things speak to us again open our eyes to see your blessing open our eyes to see your love open our eyes to see your goodness that cannot be compared to anything and thank you for coming into our lives today and in you, we are on a new journey. In you, we have a fresh start. Because you don't patch things up. You don't patch up old things. No, you make all things new. So we are new in you as we receive you today. We are newborn babies. We are new create creations. We are born again in you. The old is gone. And from this moment, we are new. And we can see the world with a, a different eye. And we can see the fullness of your goodness. Lord, give us that wisdom. Give us that understanding. And shower your love on us. So that we too can start to spread the perfume of your love wherever we go. We can be as generous as you are. We can be as loving as you are. And we can be as forgiving as you are. Thank you for forgiving us. And thank you for loving us. We bless your name. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. One God. The eternal God. The one that was the one that is and the one that is to come again. The great I am that I am, never changing. We bless your name. Thank you for allowing us to know you. And we pray all this in the much less, most powerful name of our Savior, our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So thank you for joining. Thank you 
for being there. Thank you for being good friends. I wish you a very, very happy Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day like children of the Most High. You are now new in Christ. You, are, you have a fresh understanding of who God is. And may you be blessed in all that you do. May you find peace in all that you do. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I'll see you again, I hope soon. God bless you. Bye for now.